no, I don't like that. Mm-mm. Wait, so it's rolling? No way, cool. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, no, we're full on rolling. Like, it's begun, but it hasn't, <laughs> no it hasn't officially begun. I'll do a whole intro thing, my oh, name, cool. your name, that kind of thing. Sure. Um, we'll get to some formalities, but yes, what I found mm-hmm. is, just to talk about that clipping audio thing, when I watch yeah. a video, and if the video is beautiful, but the mm-hmm. audio is crap, mm-hmm. I'm immediately turned off. Same. Immediately mm-hmm. turned off, and I think most yep. are. However... If you have yeah. crappy video and mm-hmm. amazing audio, I'll watch it mm-hmm. because it's still pleasing right. to my ears. Even though the video, like I right. can, I can compensate with my eyes for the crappy video. Right. But the audio, if it's if it's not good audio, I'm gonna. Right. Mm, it's almost listen. excruciating to listen to bad yes. audio. Yes. Like, it, it just hurts my soul too. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's well, especially <laughs> if you're playing something like piano, where you want to listen yeah. to this beautiful music, not just someone's voice. Mm-hmm. And if it's nasty and clipped and distorted, you're just like, uh, what Mm-mm. are you doing? Same Fix thing. It. Exactly. Or when you're recording like at a show or something like that. I mean, arguably should be more in the moment, but still. Right. Yes. Sometimes it does that too. There's the distortion and yes. it's hard. And, and the microphones on, on devices now are getting better and better, but they're mm-hmm. still not, they're not this. Right. Exactly. They're not. They can no. try, but they're not. <laughs> um, so let's get to formality. So sure. hello, my name is Steve Walter. This is the Steve Walter photo podcast. That is sort of what I'm calling it. And the working title of season one mm-hmm. is Everything is Art. Yes. And today we have with us... My name is Sarika Cho. <laughs> Miss Cho. <laughs> yes. Actually, my full last name is Chaturani. I'm so used to introducing myself as Cho because when I was younger, I shortened it. But Chaturani, it Just means... Just for simplification, right? For simplification, yeah. Uh, it means royal. Royal. Yes. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Really also, cool. I really dig your earrings. I just noticed oh, your earrings. Oh, thank you. Those thank are really you. cool. They're like tassel yeah. Mm-hmm. but gold. They make a mm-hmm. little bit of sound, but not really. Thank you. Yeah, I feel yeah. like it'd be a nice contrast with the green pants. For sure. So, yeah. yeah. No, you definitely came dressed appropriate. So one of, <laughs> one of the things that I want to do with this is obviously have conversations with people. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll probably end up saying that every single time is that I, I kind of wanted to start this because the conversations that I've been having with people lately, at the end of those mm-hmm. conversations, I said, oh, we should have recorded that. We literally mm-hmm. were even sitting in here as I was setting things up and we yeah. were talking and I said, you even said, you're like, oh, I should save the wisdom for later <laughs> yeah. because we just immediately start getting into a conversation yeah. and not that it's so prolific, but I think there's an interest mm-hmm. for other people to hear this stuff. So that's yes. why I'm doing this stuff. Absolutely. I think it's great that you're doing this. I think it needs to be heard because these conversations are authentic. And Yes. Authentic. I like that. That's such a good word. Mm-hmm. And it, it actually goes back to the whole theme of this season that everything is art. I feel like... Um, as a creator, you need to be authentic to yourself. And part of being authentic to yourself, um, I feel like it opens the doors for you to create all sorts of things. Like you start to notice that you're not just good at one thing. Yeah. You can do multitudes of things. I feel like us creatives have, um, we have a certain brain type. Uh, in fact, I, I actually personally believe that everybody's a creator in their own sort of way. Ooh. Because, uh, I mean, t- it, and it, again, it ties in with what is art. Everything is art. Everything's art. Everything. Because <laughs> I, I think anything that you make, especially things that are from the soul, things yeah. that you just feel really passionate about, sometimes uh, one of the practices I do, and it's actually a meditation practice, is I take my journal. I'm a big writer, yeah. so I just let the pen free flow. I find when you think too much about a project, whether it be photography, music, writing, anything, you just block yourself. Yeah. And so I feel like the best thing to do is just let yourself flow, and then you realize... Interesting. Yeah. So, so you're saying, as, as you're writing... Um, mm-hmm. It's not necessarily uh, poetry. It's not necessarily a short mm-hmm. story. It's just you're literally just putting words down that yeah. kind of come to your mind. Yes. Oh, interesting. And actually, I am turning that into a book right now. Oh, cool. I was going to say, mm-hmm. w- what have you done with these? Okay, so you're making a book out yes, of it. Yes, I am. Because ah. I find, I actually just watched a podcast today uh, by Gabrielle Bernstein. She's like a motivational speaker, okay. spirit junkie, this and cool, that. Cool, cool. So she actually does the same practice, and she has since she was a child. And so I feel like... Just writing down, that is. Just okay. writing down. Yeah, just letting... Because you realize that there is something inside of you. Some people call it a spirit guide. Some people... Mm-hmm. call it your essence, whatever it is, it is it is that which creates. It is uh, that which, you know, lets out its sound. It's the essence of you that I think comes out in your creations, whatever it be, whether it's painting or photography or music. Yeah. Um, totally forgot my point. I just... <laughs> no, it's okay. But no, I mean, b- 
being able to kind of find things that work with other people and back to, I think your point was in saying that everyone is a creator, right? Right. So the right. ability to kind of find that inner you right. and being true to it mm -hmm. is what's going to allow you to right. create. Right, because you could be creating like your daughter's fifth grade science project and for all you know, that'll win and it'll make national news. Sure, like, yeah. Or, or maybe you're creating a sacred space for people, you're a designer. Mm. Maybe, like I, I've learned over the years, there's no shortage to what you can create. Yeah. Like you, you can make anything up. You could make new art forms up all the time. Yeah. Like I, um, I do these spoken word pieces. Ooh, cool. And I, I, I performed one, and it wasn't like poetry or prose or you know mm. like haikus. They have I, I can't remember. It's like there's five structure. seven. Yeah. Five there's seven a, five. Yeah, it's like Something a like strict that. structure. So I always gave myself a lot of anxiety because I thought to create, you need to have it this way or that way or that way. And I realized you don't at all. You just got to put out what you got. I was going to say, it sort of breaks the idea almost of creation. Like, hey, you got to right. create. You need to stay in this structure. Yeah. Which I understand structure is good sometimes, all right? Like being mm -hmm. in the box, uh, as it were, is not necessarily the worst thing. But mm -hmm. you definitely need to be able to start to go outside that box. Mm -hmm. so. it's, it's good because it gives you some guidance. Mm -hmm. But I think... I think Guidance is probably a better word than structure. Right. It's guidance. Right. Yes. It's guidance. And I think you can let it get to a point where it's detrimental for you because you, yeah. you cut yourself off and you get so strict on yourself. Mm -hmm. And I feel like in order to create, and this is what I struggled with as an artist for my whole life. I, I didn't yeah. even call myself an artist till last year ah. because I, I always thought it was... You have to pick one medium at least, and you got to be really good at that medium. And yeah, you know. and and it's almost like that's not fair mm -hmm. to to say. Which I understand in a in a marketable sense because mm -hmm. I think about that directly with photography. Right? right, is that as a photographer, you know, the, the guidance that people say is um, find one genre or find one right. sort of area where you're going to focus, no mm -hmm. pun intended, um, or maybe slight pun, um, slight pun intended. Yeah, absolutely. You, you need to puns. focus. Yeah, puns are fantastic. Um, I'm a dad. They're kind of built in now. Um, yeah. you, you need to You need to focus in on that right. and then, you know, master it. And then you right. can become successful at that. And my thought always has been, I've kind of made this joke, is that um, – uh, I'm a jack of all, master of some. Uh -huh. Like, I don't want to be a master of none, and maybe I don't want to be a jack of all, but, like, I like the right. idea of master of some. Absolutely. Because I, I want, you know, there are certain things, certain art forms or certain areas of photography that I mm. don't have any interest in, and that's right. okay. Right. Um, but the areas where I really do like, there's mm -hmm. more than one, so right. why can't I really say, oh, I like doing product photography and yeah. portrait photography? They're two totally different things, but... There's some crossover, mm -hmm. and it makes me happy, so I want to do it. Yeah, yep, <laughs> hey, exactly. No, I, I totally agree with you because I, I realized, even though I dabble a little bit in drawing, some in uh, making videos or you know creating events, I am always at the end of the day a writer because, yeah. and and especially because I also like to do film and stuff like that. At the end of the day, what am I doing? I'm writing. I'm writing thoughts, feelings, uh, like whatever it is. That's what it all boils down to. So that primarily, I am a writer, um, but I dabble in other things. Yes. So, um, so yeah. No, I. And 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 that's part of why I wanted to have you come here and for us to chat, right? Because mm -hmm. uh, so we met. Mm -hmm. um, at a photo meet that was right. hosted by Project Shutter, right? Mm -hmm. um, and you were there modeling. Mm -hmm. um, I think you had your camera with you, though, didn't you? I did. I, I came primarily to model, but I had my camera with me because that's okay. another thing. I like to be on both sides of the camera. Sure. Mm -hmm. So you were there, right? And I took some pictures of you, and yeah. you were fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Immediately, like right mm -hmm. off the bat, and, and it shows this kind of difference. And we ended up mm -hmm. later having a conversation, and I'll get to that in a second. But mm -hmm. immediately, you were extremely comfortable mm -hmm. posing in front of a camera. Um, so I think myself and many others mm -hmm. clearly saw that and were like, oh, Sarika, we're going to, you just, bom <laughs> you were bombarded with photographers. I, know, I had 10 different in front of me at yeah. once. I so didn't know like, where to look. Yeah, so it's like, look over here, look over here, look over here. Okay, over here. Now do this thing. And, and that can be a little overwhelming. That's a whole other yeah, conversation. I felt like but I was in red carpet. <laughs> yeah, that's right. VIP and, and paparazzi. <laughs> um, but it, but it was very clear that you were very comfortable with mm -hmm. that. So not only are you there to possibly take some pictures, right, mm -hmm. but also there to do modeling. Right. Um, so photography is in your life, and like you said, you, mm -hmm. you also create videos. Mm -hmm. But to me, um, the thought of, right, everything is art, modeling mm -hmm. is an art. Right, absolutely. And, I mean, it's, it's 
the way I see it is it's really the the understanding of yourself and the understanding of your body. Right. Um, right. And, and the awareness of that. So we were having those conversations right. later, mm -hmm. and you told me that you, you would practice. I would. I would, because I, I would sit in front of my camera. Um, it, it, it's interesting, because I feel like um, by being on both sides of the camera, you're actually helping yourself both as the photographer totally. and the model. Yep. And same thing for like other art forms. By learning other things, it's almost like in school when you're learning a bunch of different subjects, it helps you out. You can make the connections from one thing to another. Yeah. So for me, I grew up and I would sit in front of my camera and I didn't have the flip out screen so you could watch yourself. Nope. I always, and I didn't have someone who could take my photos for me. I didn't know any photographers. So I sat since I was like 13 in front of the camera. I would record a video, press play, and I would just do a bunch of poses, hold my body, and then yeah. I'd look back at the camera and I would just see what I did and I would connect a certain part of my body movement or facial expression yeah. to what I'm seeing on the camera. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. I love that. And I think that is um, what's really, what can define the difference of, um, you know, not necessarily someone who's successful and someone who's not, but just mm -hmm. someone who, who becomes more comfortable in that space, right? Right. Um, and especially now with this, with this kind of explosion of amateur models, right? Right. Uh, which I think is great, just right. as much as there has been with so many other amateur artists. Right. Um, that... And, and I think more of, you know, photography, videography, because the tools now become affordable. But right. then, well, you have all these tools and these mm. photographers and videographers, well, you need models for that right. and actors, things like that. So right. there has been in this explosion. And I think it's that kind of mindset of, right. well, let me get better at this by just literally practicing it right. and not necessarily practicing it when a photographer needs you to, but right. practicing it on your own. Exactly, exactly. I think it shows when you're passionate about something. For sure it does. Like, it's it's a lot better uh, investment of your time and energy, I think, to be more authentic to you and your craft than trying to force yourself through something you're not passionate about. Because it'll yep. show. It shows in models. It, show, it shows everywhere. Yeah. If you're not about it, you can pick up on that. Yeah, you, you immediately will see that. Mm -hmm. um, so I thought that that was so cool was that because so so here's why I kind of found such interest in that is that as I was getting into photography and I wanted to start working with models, my immediate thought was that um, I, well the struggle that I found was that it's hard to tell someone what to do mm -hmm. right if someone who's right. not comfortable like yourself being able to kind of pose and get into mm -hmm. these these forms right. how do I communicate that it's my job as director right. of the photo shoot to communicate that. So what I needed to do was I stood in front of a mirror right. and I learned how to pose. Mm -hmm. You know, typically yeah. I, I shoot females, so I, I learned how to did. pose like a woman. I did. For sure I did. <laughs> you, oh. you, yeah, even last time we did a shoot, you posed like a woman. I thought it was so funny. It builds that comfort. <laughs> and, and so not only, yeah, not only does it kind of uh, become disarming and an icebreaker, which is nice, mm -hmm. but for me to be able to tell you, hey, I'm your mirror. So if right. you see me do something, right. you do the reverse or you do exactly what I do. Right. So if I can get into a pose that looks good, <laughs> you can get. So right. that's kind of my idea. Um, mm -hmm. So I knew I wanted to get better. So how do I get better? Okay, let me try this. Let me practice mm -hmm. this. So I like the idea of that is that you're practicing on your own and not necessarily mm – -hmm. It's you're practicing on your own time, not someone else's time, mm -hmm. to become better at what you want to do. Mm -hmm. Exactly. It's, it's so simple, but I feel like we always forget that you could be a master at anything. Yeah. At anything. Just put in the work. There's put in a, the time. There's a um, – there's a guy that I follow, uh, his name is Ralph Smart, and he does lots of YouTube videos, he's a motivational speaker, and he says constantly, the 10,000 hours. You yep. have to be willing to put in the 10,000 hours. Mm -hmm. You have to be willing to have the camera break on you and yeah. all these obstacles. And another thing I read um, yesterday was how people, it was a video on like how to be successful and achieve your dreams and whatnot. And they were saying, well, when you decide that you wanna go full force with something, the universe will throw you obstacles to say, well, do you really want to do it? Uh, and it's yeah. up to you to fight through it. And I think it's the same with art or any type of creation. It's There's so many obstacles, whether judgment, the the anxiety you give yourself, whatever it is. Yeah. You've got to push through so you can create. Oh, the anxiety is, is definitely something worth talking about. But you mm -hmm. talked about the universe, and I kind of want to talk about the universe. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so I think, again, last time we talked, we ended up talking about the universe and, mm -hmm. and energy, yes. right? Um, how... The universe is going to throw you obstacles, right? Mm -hmm. um, and that it, it's, you know, uh, what, what was the, the more, um, I can't think of the, the, the saying, but you, you're basically, mm -hmm. you're never given anything you can't handle, right? right. So it's, it's mm -hmm. energy, 
obstacles, universe throws you some stuff and, okay, well, what do I do with this? Right. Do I immediately feel defeat? Right. Or do I say, okay, this sucks, let me process that, and then how do I get beyond this? Mm -hmm. Or even just being able to process it. Okay, this is what happened. Maybe I don't know why it happened now, but maybe five years, ten years from now, right. I'll kind of understand that, oh, mm -hmm. that's why that happened. Because yeah. I've had a lot of those moments in my life where I had a lot of frustration. All of us, we all have, right? Yeah. Um, a lot of frustration, and, and you don't understand, and mm -hmm. you get really upset, and then you kind of harbor that, and you yes. hold that. Um, mm -hmm. The people that say, like... Um, uh, what is it? Yeah, story of my life. Like mm -hmm. the people that say that expression mm -hmm. and genuinely mean it, like that's the story of my life. And it's like, well, right. don't let that be the story of your life. Right. You can like, rewrite your story. Write, your, write a different story. Yeah. Like don't just don't literally just don't think of it that way. Mm -hmm. If if you process like, hey, that sucked. Like I got into a car accident. I'm just randomly making this up. I got right. into a car accident and now I got to pay a lot of money. I don't have the money. Like that sucks. Versus saying story of my life. Like that stuff happens to me. It's like right. say, okay, that sucked. I got to dig out of this mm -hmm. and – that's that, you know, right, I, I right. can't change it and I'm not going to mm -hmm. sit and expect those things to happen to me. So I think that that's, um, really interesting that mm -hmm. you are thrown things and it's, how do you process that? Right. And, and not only how do you process that, but the, the energy that you kind of put back out from it. So that's how I think about right. energy. Absolutely. I agree. I think of it, um, I, I think of life and this, this whole process as kind of like a river and you need to do, your goal is to keep flowing at the end of the day, no matter what. And this yeah. is what I realized over years and years and years of my life, especially because I myself, I struggled with a lot of mental illness when I was younger. And I, ah. I put a stop to my own, I tried to put a stop to my own life so many times, but, you know, obviously I'm still here. Yeah, and wow. So, and so that has taught me that... The, especially because I look back and I've reached different milestones each time. Every time yeah. that I kept going with my life, I discovered so many different things. I discovered how this and this in the past helped lead me to this. Yeah. And, and I realized that's that's what you need to do. Life, yeah. like I realized you're always going to have obstacles. It's always, yeah. there's going to be hardship. There's going to be adversity. There's going to be pain. But yeah. like I realized with spirituality, um, and, it, and it ties in with everything that we're talking about, like it, it is not the absence of pain or sadness, but really it is embracing all of it and flowing with it. And I think mm -hmm. when when you're trying to create, that's why I think art is so special because yeah. it is, if it, how do I want to word this? So what comes from the pain and all the hardship and everything that you're doing? I believe it is it is creation. Whatever you create, it, it is, you know, because of everything that you've experienced totally. and you've felt. Like, I think the, for example, when you have sadness in your life, you also have happiness. You need that contrast. Because if you think about it, what are some of our most beautiful and most heartfelt creations from? Where do they come from? I think you even messaged me about, uh, you had a really emotional shoot a couple weeks ago. Yeah. And and I know you felt like it was it was beautiful. It was and, fantastic. Yeah. yeah. And, and I think... I think that's what it is, is you, you got to embrace life in its fullest and yeah. you, you don't realize the connection and how deeply spiritual everything is. But, it, but art, I think, especially it is especially spiritual because it is you. It is your essence. Yeah. It, oh, yeah. That's I kind of I got chills as you were saying that because I, I thought back to that shoot that you were talking about mm -hmm. that I did. That was by far one of the most moving things yeah. that I've done, like in, in the moment with someone where mm -hmm. where. You know, you're sort of connected beyond. Um, so basically, I did a shoot with my friend Kim, not to like hide this, like, because I want mm -hmm. people to know about it, right? Um, so Kim experienced postpartum depression. Mm -hmm. um, my wife went through that. We went through that. And right. that's difficult. And it becomes right. this sort of taboo topic, right? People are like, right. oh, don't talk about it. Like, like if we just continue to talk about it vaguely, people would be like, what are you talking about? Right. Talking about postpartum depression right. and how it's a real thing. Right. So Kim basically wanted to write. Um, she she has a website, Millennial Mom Blog, right? Oh no. Um, no. Yeah, oh yeah. So so she does she blog. does a lot of blogging, mm -hmm. um, and she's a young mom. She has a three year old, and she basically is sharing what it's like to be right. um, a, a millennial mom, right? right? It's in the title. Right. So she she wrote this article, and she said, "Hey Steve, could could we could we do a shoot around that? I want to come in with my daughter. Mm -hmm. Like I want to do a photo shoot, yeah. and I want to." I want to tap into those emotions that I felt. So oh, we were basically beautiful. just having a conversation, the two of us, and it became yeah. very emotional. Mm -hmm. And then it was one of those things where, where I was talking to her and we right. were just we were just open and raw. And then I was like, I'm going to take pictures. She's like, yeah, okay. And it was one of those oh. things where you kind of have that balance of like, is it okay to take pictures because I'm disconnecting from this moment? Or 
-hmm. Is it, oh my God, this is the perfect time to take pictures. And, right. and that, when I think about uh, photographers that, that, are, that are documenting these, these serious moments, like there is that struggle, when, especially when you think about kind of like, um, you know, uh, photographers of war, right? right? Where do I right. take a picture or do I help this person, right? right? Do I document this to preserve that memory and this, this fact and this uh, time or... Right. Do I put down the camera and help that person? So there's that struggle. Obviously, this was not that extreme. Right. <laughs> but it was one of those moments where I kind of, it felt right to take pictures. Right. So I took pictures right. of Kim when we were in that, in, in that space. Um, yeah. So, so that was just. And it was beautiful. It the was photo. beautiful. You, you captured powerful. the emotion. Yeah. Powerful. Yeah. That's what it was. It was just powerful. Um, mm -hmm. And even just on, you know, this, this, I don't want to say simple, right? Because when you think about that, that time that she went through and that we went through, right? Mm -hmm. Like that was huge. That Absolutely. was a lot. Um, so being able to kind of share that and, mm -hmm. and um, capture it. Yeah. Right. It was powerful. Yeah. And that's, yeah. and I think, I, th I think that's so awesome. Like, yeah. I, and I think that people who look at that photo, especially people who relate to it, um, yeah. you know, it, it pulled something out of them. Yep. Uh, she had the tear down her face and everything. Yeah. It was it was beautiful. Yeah. And I think e going back really quickly to what you were saying about how do you find that balance between I want to take the photo, but I want to be in the moment. I'd like to think you do a little bit of both. You take the photo, you take a couple, especially if you have that shutter speed up. Yeah. <laughs> you take it and then you run and go in the moment. Like, you know, the National Geographic, like they're filming the little turtles oh, getting yeah. eaten or something. It, it, it's the oh, same yeah. thing. And I'm thinking, save the turtles. Save the turtles. What are you doing? <laughs> but yeah. at the same time, show me what's going on. I want right. to know. Like, right. Oh, I'm <laughs> Actually, it's funny you say that. I'm watching. Have you ever seen the series Planet Earth? Oh my God! Yeah, I just watched Planet Earth too. I'm in the process of watching Planet Earth too. <laughs> That's where I'm, I got the reference. I did the second episode. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So I haven't seen the turtles getting eaten yet. But oh, man. I mean, it happens, right? Where like yeah. you see um, the first episode with mm -hmm. the iguana, the the sea iguana, and the snakes, yeah. and you're like, Oh my God, that was you're like, so funny. Go iguana, go! Yeah. But then you see some of them get caught, and you're like, Oh, but you're like, Well, that's nature. Like right. that snake. Like it's so funny how like we're immediately mm -hmm. like. We're always in the favor of the victim, <laughs> always, almost right. always, because the predator is like, Arr. but the right. prey, we're always like, no, don't eat the, but right. it's like, that's kind of why they're there. Yeah, that's true. We don't realize. In the world. Like, that's why it's there. It's not yeah. like the snake is like, oh, I'm vegetarian. It's like, uh, <laughs> no, the snake is not vegetarian. The snake's yeah. like, that iguana is the only thing around here for miles. I'm going to eat it. Right. I want to survive. Right. I want to make babies, right? But right. we, we, it's so funny how, <laughs> and maybe it's the narrative. Maybe it's the way they portray the story because yeah. they definitely do skew it that way. They, do. they don't show the snakes getting eaten because then we'd no. probably be like, no, don't eat the snakes. Yep. But, uh. Yeah, that's got to be really difficult for these yeah. guys who are out there for weeks and they mm -hmm. see this and like, yo, Laguana is real cool. It's a baby. Like, I want to help them. Yeah. You can't help them. No, no, you can't. I mean, you could maybe off time, but. <laughs> yeah. And you want to know what I'm going to do? I'm going to tie that back to being an artist. Yes. There are a lot of times that as an artist, you need to experience um, these sort of downsides. You need to yes. kind of go through those hurdles. You need mm -hmm. to go through those those things that the universe is sending yes. to you to say, Absolutely. Hey, this is going to be difficult for you. Mm -hmm. I can't make it easy. Even right. as much as like, as much as what I want to do, um, obviously in recording this, like I want to kind of share with people, um, everyone's experiences, right. right. As artists or just as humans. Right. But right. then I also want to help photographers learn more about photography. Yeah, like absolutely. I love doing that. I absolutely love That's doing that. I love sharing things that I know, right? right. And that, that I'm passionate about. I know. I love the uh, Tip Tuesdays. They're Tuesday awesome. tips. Yeah. Uh, Tuesday tips. <laughs> um, that's, yeah, I, I, I love doing that. So mm -hmm. as much as I, I know I want to try to continue to do that, right, mm -hmm. um, there's only so much I can do. There's only right. so many conversations I can have or there's only so many experiences I can project, mm -hmm. whereas you kind of have to be like, hey, dude, mm -hmm. you're an iguana and you have to run away from snakes now. <laughs> right. Like, hopefully you don't get caught by those snakes. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, I mean, maybe art isn't as dramatic, but sometimes, I, I it, can sometimes it is yeah. right. Like depression is a real thing with an artist. Yes. Anxiety and depression. Those mm -hmm. like, I can't say how many mood swings that like I've had to share with my wife where mm -hmm. I'm just like, Oh, I suck. I can't do anything. She's like, okay, yeah, yep. I know you, you don't yep. suck. And it's like, <laughs> I know, I know what I'm saying is like overly dramatic. And it's like, I know I have a skill set. Like I know I have the confidence, I, but mm -hmm. it's like in the moment I'm like, right. what am I doing? Yeah, I what feel like... What am I like, doing? I suck. <laughs> yeah, and you know, I feel like it's so important to really feel into that, like, 
I feel like this, I struggled with this for a short period of time is sometimes when I'd get really, really depressed. Um, I share a lot of intimate things online, a lot of intimate journal entries and pieces. Yeah. And I used to be afraid to do that because yep. there's this thought that you can't share the negative or, or in my head, yeah. I didn't, I didn't want to create that narrative for myself. And, right. and I have a friend actually, his name's Roberto and he struggled with the same thing. He was writing a song um, about a situation he was going through and we were performing it and the people he was writing the song about were there oh, and yeah and, and he said he said I really want to put this out there though I need to write this but he was having so much anxiety because he said but you know this isn't really who I want to be as an artist uh, and, interesting right but I told him well I think it's beautiful and I think it's authentic because it different rappers different artists they have different albums different e even within the same album you hear back to back one song about the pain and then the next song about getting better Enjoy. like I think I think you just got to put out what you have and I, this I know we were talking about anxiety before we wanted mm -hmm. to touch on that and I think like this is something I'm so like I always want to share because I think there's so many problems in the world there's so many people who need help so many people who are in the dark and what brings people out songs art things yeah. it that's usually what lifts you up and so you have no idea who you're helping by being true to yourself and putting your art out there yeah like i go on youtube and i see um vloggers and it's not just the ones who have millions of subscribers that have views yep even the people who have 10 subscribers have views yeah. and comments and a following yeah and i think people forget that i think people forget how big the world is there's yeah. a lot of people on this planet so many people there's so many people and there's so many people you can touch with your work for all you know this one panic attack you're having about a particular situation that you feel alone in and you and you post about it and you make a I don't know song or painting about it that could touch someone else who felt yeah. the same exact thing but you wouldn't know unless you put it out there the time goes by when the lights are rolling the, the time yeah no the time is definitely <laughs> flying hold on let me let me tuck this away nicely good um so I so there's a obviously a, a jump in this conversation um mm -hmm. But uh, I had to stop the camera and restart it because it's just the two of us here. Um, and I don't have anyone else to kind of operate the camera. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the things that I did to kind of help support this this mm -hmm. creation that I'm doing is I actually made a Patreon page. I don't know mm -hmm. if you're familiar with Patreon. No, I'm not. So Patreon is, so this is my plug for people to right. help contribute to this cause, as it were. Right. Uh, so Patreon is basically a free website that you sign up for. Oh. Um, and it allows you to... Um, have people donate money. So similar to the concept of Kickstarter, okay. but on a potentially more regular basis. Right. So kind of like everyone sort of becomes a little sponsor. Right. But oh, then with cool. that, right, um, yeah. so there can be donations of as small as a dollar. Right. Like, hey, a dollar a month is fantastic. Thank right. you. Uh, Five dollars, ten dollars, right. things like that. I think I have a one, three, a five, and a ten. Right. And with that, what you can do now for the audience that helps kind of contribute um, is... Mm -hmm you can sort of give back. So the idea would right. be that, um, hey, everyone, I want everyone to have access to this podcast for free. Right. Uh, the video yeah. portion, when I, when I don't have to cut through the video, I want <laughs> them to also have access right. to that for free. I'm going to put that on YouTube, right? Right. Um, but to create the, the podcast, there's a mm -hmm. cost, right, to have a, an right. RSS feed and things like right. that. And then not only that, the time it takes to edit and all that stuff. Right. I'm not going to get right. into that. You guys are artists. You guys know mm -hmm. that it takes time to make this stuff, right? Yes. Um, I don't need to explain that, but mm -hmm. with those Patreon supporters, um, they can get access to mm -hmm. more things. So right. later what That's I want to so do cool. is, um, we're going to take some pictures together. Right. And for those that are interested that want to see sort of behind the scenes as right. kind of how that process happens. Mm -hmm. And then even beyond that, when I bring those pictures on the computer mm -hmm. and I retouch them and I call them and right. I go through my process mm -hmm. for those that kind of want that additional education, mm -hmm. that would be supported with a Patreon oh, wow. tier. So if you pay, yeah. um, I think I have that set up for the $5 mark. Mm -hmm. Um, if you're paying a little bit more then you have access oh. to those videos when I produce them. Wow. So it's the idea of, I'm going to give you content, right. right? But you help support what I want to do right. to produce that content. Wow. So Patreon's really cool. That. And there's other websites that do yeah. this. Um, a, a buddy of mine who runs a podcast has, has been um, mm -hmm. hosting a Patreon page for a while. Wow. And it's fantastic. There was one yeah. guy that I was looking on there because I was kind of doing some research. You got to do research. Right. Of course. And there's a photographer on there. Mm -hmm. And you can choose to list how much mm -hmm. you, you generate as far as income. Right. Um, which is eh, that's another topic. But right. This mm -hmm. guy is generating almost $4,000 a month wow. 
from people that are donating to him. Wow. And That's he's offering awesome. all kinds of stuff. He's right. got a big YouTube following. So like he That's has wonderful. the ability to kind of generate that. And then when I think about that, I'm like, Yo, that's crazy. Right. You're making four thousand. That's right. a good job. That's a that's a great like job. that's a well yeah. paid job. Yeah. From people that want to just support what you do, and yeah. he's giving back. So that yeah. basically that's a full time job that he's Absolutely. doing. Absolutely. And then I think I'm like, oh, that's fantastic. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He's being supported by people that that like what he does, and right. I'm like, yeah, I want to do that. Yeah. Or at least I want to do it in the space that I can. Right. right. I'm not saying I want to. I'm not saying like, hey guys, get me four thousand dollars. No. Right. Um, but enough to kind of help support what this is doing right. um, and fund this. So, so that's the idea. That's right. like a really long commercial for, right. hey, uh, guys, I have a Patreon page, uh, patreon.com slash Steve Walter Photo. <laughs> right. No, it's, it's just it's the place for you to go if you want to help right. donate to, to doing this stuff. Right. And then awesome. the idea, too, is that, hey, I can get a cameraman. The whole reason why I'm bringing this up is right. so I can get a cameraman. I can throw him a couple bucks. Hey, dude, could you start and stop the camera? Oh, no. <laughs> that, that would right. be the idea. Or maybe I have two cameramen, right? right? So that now this interview sort of becomes a little right. bit more dynamic. But as of right, right. now, it's just me. Right, right. So and you got to start somewhere. Hopefully it'll grow. Yeah, for sure. And yeah. um, as you said, you, you kind of felt an energy around this, right? Right. So mm-hmm. um, I also feel that, that same energy mm-hmm. that uh, hopefully this is something that um, people will find an interest in. Absolutely. Um, and enjoy. Yeah, definitely. The the more and more that I've been tapping into myself lately and like the spirituality, I, I starting to have this like I was telling you before we started rolling, this kind of vision when I start a project and decide with full intensity that this is gonna happen or I or I see someone else sometimes. Happens more with me, but I I can see it coming into fruition. Yeah. And it's it's really cool to be able to do that. It's really cool, not just with art and, and spirituality. I mean you you keep going and you keep you keep staying open, open to new ideas, open to new beliefs and everything and, and you don't even realize the kind of creations you come up with. Yeah. You don't realize how successful something is going to be. And I think that's one of the I think that's one of the things that stops me and so many other artists is, you know, is this gonna be successful? Is it going somewhere? Right. Um Yeah, that is uh, yeah, that's such a and I obviously, I, I went through that, right? Mm-hmm. Like, what is this going to become? And I don't know. And the the thought of um, it not becoming, mm-hmm. oh, so what is it? Um, analysis paralysis. Mm-hmm. You're overanalyzing right. what it could be. Right. So you become sort of stagnant and you just stop and you yeah. go, what if, what if, what mm-hmm. if, what if? Well, you don't know mm-hmm. until you actually do it. And the thing that stinks is that, it doesn't stink. No, it's, it's fantastic is that, mm-hmm do something. People will try something and it doesn't work. Okay, right. cool. It didn't catch on. No big deal. Like right. it's, it's okay. You tried something. Right. Um, and as long as you kind of see it through, right. right. At least yeah. th- trying to as, exactly. as, as much as you can see it through. Um, that's, that's what's going to make the difference mm-hmm. of you kind of pushing through that. Um, what if, what if, what if, right. Right, exactly, and I and it, it's it's so cool. I can actually share a real life example right now. So, with an event that I'm throwing in a couple mm. weeks, it's called Artists Table, and I've been wanting to throw this event for over a year now. And I had different ideas for it that yeah. I just wanted to create a space, almost like an open studio where yeah. I also serve food and you could also dance and stuff. But I had always thought way too much, and and I said, well, maybe I need to add this, this, and that so it'll be successful, or this, this, and that to get more ticket sales. And as you can see, it took about a year and a half, and now I'm here. Right. And the event's happening, and it's happening because I decided I'm just going to go for it, just one. Do it. And two, it, like, again, the whole thing with feeling like you need to be successful. Well, I, I sat in my journal one day, and I did the thing I was talking about earlier, just free-flowing, letting whatever come through me. And it, it's like this voice, this whatever was on paper said to me, you're not supposed to know if it's going to work out or not. You uh, you know, you may lose a couple hundred dollars. You may lose some time. But this is a part of the growth process. You're supposed to just try. And it just it just clicked in my head. People always tell you, but in that moment, it really yeah. clicked that, you know, it, it's, it almost seems ridiculous. How are you going to expect? I've never planned an event in my life. And yeah. so how am I going to expect that this is going to be a multi-million sort of thing? You know, you have to... First time, right. Right. And, <laughs> and I realized... Especially like this morning, actually, I wrote in my journal, well, if you're going to have failures and make mistakes and things like this in life, then what's the point? And I wrote back to myself, well, that is the point to experience all of those things, to yep. grow from it. it. Like 
if you think about it, there's the anxiety, it, it's almost kind of exciting to fight that. It's exciting to fight whatever you need to to make something happen. It's exciting to be in the moment and have it be really crazy. Yeah. And and then it's exciting and it feels wholesome to look back and say, I did it. I yeah. tried. Yeah, you know? and oh yeah, that's so true. And then there not even that, but um the the mistakes, right? Like mm -hmm. it, it I'm just going to make up some quote is that basically if you're not making mistakes, you're not learning. Right. Um, like if you've right. never made a mistake in your life, you haven't really right. learned all that much. Right. Cause what are you going to learn from? You, you need to have that again, like you were talking mm -hmm. about before you, you sort of mm -hmm. need to have that negative to appreciate that good right. so that when you encounter that scenario of something that happens, you can reference a mm -hmm. bad time and go, Oh, I know how to approach this. Yep. Ah, I'm not going to let that yep. happen again. Mm -hmm. No different than anything else in life, but whether it's right. planning an event, planning a shoot, um, mm -hmm. using specific colors on a canvas to right. say like, oh, if I mix this red with this blue, ugh, that's not the purple I want. Like, right. here's the purple that I want. Like right. something so simple and small as right. that, um, mm -hmm. as maybe finding an alternate route to come drive to the studio. You're right. like, hey, I don't want to go through that New Haven traffic. Let me right. try this. Oh, this is way better. Right. Um, right. You just got to listen. All of that. You got to listen to the calling and you got to follow it. Yeah. Like yesterday, um, I had this idea. I was sitting, I was writing and I thought, I was listening to a podcast that Gabrielle Bernstein led and she said, whatever it is, if you have an idea, whether it's for a book or whatever, you need to get up and go do it. No, nope, do don't think about it. Just go do it. And so I had this idea. Well, gee, I kind of want to make a t-shirt that says you just want to be free. Yeah. I'm wearing oh, that t-shirt right that. now. <laughs> That's so yeah. good. And I thought I thought to myself today, <laughs> like I love it. <laughs> thank you. I thought to myself today, I, I want to come to the shoot and I want to look like super nice. And then I was like, well, I kind of want to wear my shirt. And it if you can see, like there's some mess ups right here. Yeah. And and I said, I think there was a letter that had fallen off last time, but yeah. either way, I said to myself at the end of the day, you know what? I want to be authentic. Yeah. I want to put out what I made and you know what? That's cool. Yeah. Especially because we don't see authenticity as much as we do the perfect finished product. So Yeah. And and that's yeah. so part of the approach that I have with this too is I mm. almost want to do it unedited. So if there's right. ums and uhs and maybe there's times where you're like, mm. Oh, uh, I didn't really have a clear <laughs> thought there. I yeah. kind of that will keep it authentic, right? Absolutely. So that it's real. Mm -hmm. And that would hopefully attract an audience that doesn't just say, oh, this is some perfectly polished thing, right? right. Obviously, I have microphones and lights and all that stuff. But right. there is something to the authenticity of yes. just being real. Yes. Um, no mm -hmm. different than, hey, if someone else was sitting in on this conversation, they would be a part of the exact same right. words. Right, exactly. Um, so I think that's that's mm -hmm. cool. So if I could ask you, when, when it comes mm -hmm. to sort of planning that event or mm -hmm. uh, writing in your journal. Is this something that you, you're, are you scheduling time to do this? Cause here's mm -hmm. the other thing too, that, that all this kind of connects to is time management, right? right. Oh my is, gosh, yeah. is when do you make time, like making time to do this, to record this? Um, I'm at right. the point now where I need to like, I need to schedule time to just like relax, which right. is weird. Yeah. So w when you're, when you're planning this stuff, is it that you're saying, okay, when I wake up tomorrow, here's my to-do list. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do this at 10. I'm going to do this at 1230. I'm going to give myself mm -hmm. an hour. Is, is that right. kind of how you have things well, structured or is it a little more free flowing? Mm -hmm. it's, it's interesting that you asked that because I have horrible time management. <laughs> <laughs> I really do. Don't it's, we all? <laughs> Don't we all? It's a, uh, yeah, it's something I am cons – This is, actually, it's funny that you asked that because this is the one thing that I noticed has been holding me back. I noticed this is what I need to work on the most. So I can tell uh, you what, I come to, what I've come to so please. far. And one thing I realized is you need a routine. You need a routine mm. that works for you. And – and that's so important. Like you're so focused on where you want to be and what you want to do, but you're not doing anything to take care of your now. And so that yeah. same thing goes for creating. In order to create like a consistent flow, I got to start off the day right, eating the right foods, uh, taking care of yeah. yourself. And I also find that the morning time is a great time to let out the most um, of that essence of whatever is in you. Like when I free write with the journal, I like to do that when I wake up. I also... Hmm. Yeah, honestly, it really is pretty free flowing. I don't have a schedule, cool. but I I think I would like to have some more somewhat of a schedule. Yeah, because I think it uh, it helps you. I think um, too rigid of a schedule makes me feel trapped. Yeah, but um, it's almost like I don't know. I'm still working with this, but I'm thinking yeah. right now. I kind of want to just have goals for the day. How I want to go about it. I usually yeah. wake up in the morning and I'm like, all right, I'm gonna tackle this, this, and that. 
and we'll just keep going. And go from there, right, for, uh, kind of uh, play it by ear. Like right. there, there was some guy, uh, some speaker, some motivational speaker, um, and he said, you know, p- plan, plan little goals. Mm-hmm. Like set a goal to like make the bed for the day. Right. Like you made the bed, boom, first thing done. Right. Next task. Like, what right. do we do? So already, like, at the start of your day, you can feel accomplished. Mm-hmm. Like, I get it. Making your bed really right. not that hard. But mm-hmm. I can tell you right now, my half of the bed's probably a little bit lumpy right now. So right. I, I I totally get that. Is right. that then you can say, okay, I've done this, this, right. this. Because I do have yeah. checklists of things that not only that I need to do um, for work, but for me, right. for my family. And it's like, right. okay, I need to kind of schedule all of this right. in. And how do I structure this? To, right. to feel like I can get this done or right. is it something that I can push off to tomorrow? Not procrastinate, right. but it's not a priority. Right. That kind of thing. Right. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, lost my train of thought again. More Sorry. authenticity there. Sorry. But, yeah. <laughs> but um, no, it's still not coming to me. No. <laughs> And that's no. fine. And, and I apologize if I cut you off oh, on that. Okay. But it was, um, it, it's an interesting thing when, when I think about the, the time management, because I mm-hmm. think I struggle oh, with right. that. I think everyone kind of has some struggle with, mm-hmm. with time management. Like, what do I put priority right. on? Like, there are things that I want to do that I know are fun and that will right. make me feel good, but, ah, oh, crap, I got to fold the laundry. Right. Yeah. There's a, there's a, um, problem that I face and that I find a lot of our art, other artists struggle with. And it's that, if I force myself to be creative, is it authentic? Uh, and and that's yeah. and that's the thing, because right when I when I write, when I do things, it's because I feel like doing them. But yeah. the problem that can sometimes happen is if you're only doing things when you feel like doing them, are you gonna get where you wanna be? Yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. Right. Sometimes you need to you have to push yourself. Right. You have to say, I don't wanna do this now, but well, I have to do it now. Right. Ah uh, yeah. That's right. um so I guess that's that gives you not even so much of that that structure, but that um, I forget the word we used before that that mm-hmm. uh, supplemented structure. Oh, um, you said it, and it was guidance. Guidance. Yes. You need a little bit more of that that guidance to say that's going to keep you on target, that's going to keep you on path. Right. Um, to say, hey, by noon I need to have this a kind of accomplished. Like let me let me respond to all right. my emails. There's um, uh, a gentleman by the name of Tim Ferriss. I don't know if you're familiar right. with Tim, Tim Ferriss. Ferriss. No. Um, he, he's a guy that's basically, uh, he kind of s- got on the scene by writing a book called The Four right. Hour Work Week. Four hour basically, work. I've kind heard of, of that book. Yes. yes. Okay, so that's Tim Ferriss. Mm-hmm. And he basically is like the, um, he's a life hacker, right. basically. He's a body hacker. Like mm-hmm. he's done all these things right. to kind of hack the system, mm-hmm. as it were, the, the right. way that we awesome. sort of expect things to be done. Right. Um, so he's very much all about that is that, right. you know, um, if, if you can complete these tasks now, complete mm-hmm. them now. Right. Um, if they're going to take more than, you know, X mm-hmm. amount of time, right. schedule them for a later right. time. But if you can do something in five minutes or three mm-hmm. minutes, just do it. Right. Just get it done. Yeah. Okay. And then next thing that you mm-hmm. can do in three minutes, if it's something that's going to take 10, 20 minutes, an hour, schedule it. So yep. it's, it's an interesting thought. And again, I kind of tie that back to when I'm doing stuff at my desk workflow right. and okay, yeah. If I need to spend, if it's going to take me an hour to retouch these images, mm-hmm. but I can answer these three emails right. in 10 minutes, let me do those emails first right. and then do the retouching. I read that book. Ooh. Yeah, no. And yeah. I, you want to know what? I haven't even read it. You haven't? I haven't oh. even read it. I'm just aware of it. <laughs> um, but right. what I've done is I've, I've watched um, interviews with Tim Ferriss um, right. and, and I'm familiar with him. He's, I've heard him on many a podcast. Right. And I'm just familiar with his philosophy. Right. Um, he's got, oh, he's such an interesting guy. Mm-hmm. Oh, um, I got to go watch this podcast then. Yeah, he's, I love he's, all he's these really people. cool. Mm-hmm. And it's so neat because when you think about like these people, you're like, who are they? They're no one. They're just a person. Mm-hmm. They're just someone who's sharing their thoughts. Mm-hmm. And everyone else was kind of like, huh, yeah, that's not a bad idea. Right. Like they're just, they're just people. Right. Um, and, and I guess then at the end of the day is they're driven to kind of share their message. Right. And mm-hmm. no different than any other type of and art, right? And that's their right? creation. And that's an art. Yeah, see, yeah. everything is art. Everything see what is I did? art. It, everything it is art. It literally is because you're always creating. Yeah. You're, even your life. E- even if you just sit at your couch and you play video games, that's a creation. Your life is a creation. I like to I, – I form this view that – um, you, along with the universe, like you're a co-creator of your life. Hmm. Um, and that's a very, very popular belief. And there's so many books written on that, documentaries like The Secret. That's a popular one on Netflix. Okay. Like, and, and they all talk about that, how you are a creator. The, the beliefs, your perception of the world, this is all mm. based on what you created. Yeah. So really, 
every single person is a creator. Everyone's a creator. Every single person. Like even this moment, your your personal narrative, everything, you create it. Your yeah. relationships, your, I think relationships are an art. Uh, there's a book I'm also writing called The Art of a Relationship. And th that's what it is. Like there, there's an art to that. There's an art to everything. Yeah. Oh, that's mm -hmm. so true. Yeah. See now, it, oh yeah. So now we're getting deep and I like that. <laughs> well, and I, I like that it doesn't have to be like oh, this photo podcast, right? Right. Um, I, I want to have deeper conversations than just like talking right. about photography. Obviously, there are some times when I'm just going to talk about photography, right? Right. That's what brought us together. But right. hey, cool. Let's talk about this now. Right. And and the idea that um, we were talking about energies, the energies that you create, mm -hmm. but that your beliefs, right? That that um, your reality is what right. you perceive it to be. Right. Like now we're getting into a whole other yeah. space. <laughs> like and then now that makes me think about. Um, color theory and things like that. Do you remember yeah. on the internet a while ago when there was the, is is this dress uh, black and blue oh or God, white and gold? Yeah. That, that freaked me out so much. That was, that was my favorite thing ever on the internet, mm -hmm. As a, uh, aside from the cat that says, yes. Oh my God, yeah, yeah. Okay, so those two things. I'm going to put those two things on the list of my favorite things on the internet that went viral oh because <laughs> that, that dress thing stirred up this conversation that I started having with people because I'm a color nerd and, and I'm right. an art nerd. I started saying, well, it's your perception of that color. Right. That's what makes this so interesting is that right. technically, what colors were those dress? Well, I brought right. the image into Photoshop and I sampled the colors right. and the, the darker color was like an olive and the other color was like kind of like this beige. Like right. that's technically what those colors are, huh. but it's how your brain is processing those colors, right? right. So color is, is always relative like so right. many other things, like right. your belief of what this world is, your belief of right. your relationship. It's all mm -hmm. relative stuff. So yeah. you might look at my pants and say, oh, those are gray mm -hmm. pants. Right. But if I put this next to another color that's gray, right. you might realize, oh, these pants are kind of brown or right. not brown, but they have a little tint of green in them. Right. So while you once had gray, you now right. have green. And mm -hmm. that whole conversation wow. about it's your perception right. of that. And the reality was the, the dress was black and blue. Um, right. And, <laughs> and it was cool that your brain, people's mm -hmm. brains were correcting it. Right. You were automatically right. correcting that color because you're like, well, no, this is a bad picture from a cell phone mm -hmm. camera, so it must be this color. Mm -hmm. And then other people were saying, well, I can't correct it. Yeah. I'm only looking at what I think I see. Right. And I'm trying to interpret those colors. Right. So it was just so... So interesting. Isn't it cool to be human? I think uh, it's so it's cool. It's so cool. And to have those conversations. <laughs> yeah. And so many people would look at that and be like, oh, this is stupid internet. It's like, no, there's more yeah. to this. Yeah. This is, this is a really interesting conversation. Mm -hmm. So I loved that. And mm -hmm. I started getting into having conversations with people about optical illusions. And yeah. I'm like, I love optical illusions. Yeah. Like the way that you can trick your mm -hmm. brain. When I was a little kid, sorry, I'm going off on a tangent, but oh, I just okay. finished that coffee, so now I'm ready to go. <laughs> yeah. Um, when I was a little kid, I had this football wallpaper. I didn't mm -hmm. really like football, but my parents were like, oh, you're a right. boy and you share a room with your brother. Football, cool. Right. But what I learned from that wallpaper was right. that it was a pattern. Mm -hmm. So what I did was... I would lay in bed Saturday right. mornings or whatever when I didn't have to be anywhere. Right. And I would lay in bed and my, I would let my eyes play tricks. And I would let my eyes kind of relax to where the pattern blended in together and it became three-dimensional. Right. You can, you know, you can do that. I've actually done that before myself. I love, and, and yeah. it works with any pattern. Right. So if you've ever seen those magic eye books, mm -hmm. yes, I was very yes. good at those because mm -hmm. I sort of pre-trained my eye right. before those things came right. out as a little kid right. to create these patterns. And when I saw the, the, the magic eye books, I was like, oh, this makes perfect sense right. to me. So I could mm -hmm. see those things in a flash right. and it was so incredible to me mm -hmm. that, that I was able to kind of let that sort of thing yeah. happen and, and just let it process. Right. Um, I don't mm -hmm. exactly remember where I was going with that. Right. But, <laughs> it's okay. But but it's basically <laughs> that that sort of oh, optical illusion and, and right. that sort of the ability to kind of see more than what's just right. there. Right. I, I guess was my point. So it was so interesting when right. when just that simple little dress came up. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's all relative. Absolutely, yeah. Hey, your perception is everything. Yeah. Yeah. It's so cool. How are we doing on time? Hold on. I was just thinking the same thing. <laughs> oh, we got we're at fifty minutes, so I think I think we got a couple more. So, no way. Um, awesome. so we got a little bit more time. Awesome. Um, before before we um, wrap things up, as it were, right? Mm -hmm. um, I want to make sure you have the opportunity to share um, mm -hmm. your your content where people can right. find that. Um, mm -hmm. And before we do that, what I wanted to do, mm -hmm. I want to try and come up with. Something that I ask everyone mm -hmm. that can be applicable to anyone and everyone. And basically sure. it's, it's this, is that anytime I meet someone new, mm -hmm. 
most of the time when people meet someone, mm -hmm. they say, what do you do? Right. And a lot of times people will say, oh, I, I, you know, I work at, I do accounting at some stupid job. Like that's, right. it is what I it hate is. I that question. But it's, it's mm. a crappy question because mm -hmm. it, it doesn't define you. It's just what right. you do. It's literally in the question, mm. what do you do? And it's mm. like, well, what I do a lot of things. Yeah. But if you're asking oh what I do for God. work, like what I do for <laughs> income to support my family, it's not necessarily what I enjoy. Yeah. So what I've done is recently, um, and recently within the past couple of years, I'll say to someone, what are you passionate about? Yes. So that's I my question that. to you. Sarika, what are you passionate about? Well, I've asked myself this question very often. It's so weird because I wrote a blog post exactly on that. On yeah. I hate when people ask you, what do you do? Because um, like you said, you do a lot of things. I feel like the question is kind of debilitating too. Yeah. Um, but to answer the question, uh, it's life. I'm passionate about life. Cool. I'm passionate about living um, to your fullest and being authentic. Yeah. Um, and I'm very passionate about love in in every essence because yeah. I think love, I think it flows through, I, I think it's creation. I think when you create, that's an act of love. Yeah. I think any of the purest things that you do is an act of love. So really, what I'm, I'm so passionate about like the spirituality and, and yeah. everything. I'm also very passionate about um, creating an essence. So mm. be, especially because I, over the years, what's healed me the most is, you know, music or, or like the dark color red, um, like oh. kind of like a deep blood red. That's kind like of a, like your earrings. Kind of like my earrings. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So cool. these are colors these are colors that to me are they they turn me on and like certain uh, this is so cool because i was thinking about the science behind colors music and oh, things yeah. like that yeah and i thought to myself okay well if i look back at the music that turns me on the most and when i say turns me on i mean like it makes me feel alive it makes me feel passionate it makes me want to thrive so yeah. the the dark color red um a music that i wish i i knew the exact measurements of how to measure sound but yeah. i have a theory that there's a particular i don't know if decibel is the right word or or frequency or frequency yep. yeah that the music i listen to plays that and i love sure. that oh, and i sure. think all of that uh, the lighting in a room mm -hmm. I, I mean we talked about this light is so important um lighting in a room the this is why i'm so interested in interior design event design yes. so many things because at the end of the day it's all about creating an essence and i believe that ah. my soul is an essence and it, it it's nice to have that balance to have your outer reality kind of nurture that inner reality and so and so forth so that's what i'm really passionate about that's is awesome creating that and I feel like how do you find your essence and whatnot you just be true to who you are yeah oh i love yeah. that there, oh yeah that's so oh you're right and <laughs> it, it so that that that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, I, of I love the um, I love the psychology behind music mm -hmm. and behind color yeah. and light and all of that. Like mm -hmm. there there is a mood that can be conveyed with all of that. Right. There was there was this woman that I met um, when when I was I was basically teaching her how to use her computer. Right. right. So we would sit and we would go over things on the computer, and then she would get bored because right. she was an older generation. And then she started showing me these web pages and this gentleman that basically right. does frequency analysis. Right. And the idea and the understanding is frequency that every analysis. so right. everyone is sort of tuned a little bit differently. Like you were saying, right. like there's certain music that that plays at a frequency. Oh, my right. buddy Tom, Tom, you you know exactly what I'm talking about, Tom. Mm -hmm. um, why isn't Tom here? He could he could explain <laughs> it better. But basically, right. that there are certain tones that your body's going right. to react to. Right. Um, and not necessarily like. Um, like the the C major or D minor, no, like like a tone, like an actual like ooh, or right. ooh, like that right. tone. Oh, it's good. <laughs> that oh, thanks. Um, that your body is gonna go. Oh, I resonate with this. Right. So right. what I did was uh, maybe two years ago, I mm -hmm. did um, uh, the uh, sensory deprivation tank. So I, I you did. I floated. Oh, it was awesome. Oh, see, this right. is we're so far away from photography, and I love it. <laughs> I absolutely love it. People mm -hmm. be like photo podcast, cool. Uh, sensory deprivation tanks. <laughs> yeah. What? Which mm -hmm. is which is great, but I did that, mm -hmm. and the gentleman asked me. He was like, mm -hmm. um, "Are you familiar with like frequencies? Do you want me mm -hmm. to play like a frequency?" And I was like, "I have no idea what you're talking about, dude." Mm -hmm. And then when he explained to me like we have like a CD basically that will play right. an hour right. of a frequency, right. and I was like, "That's insane!" But right. it's not if you're sitting there in that tank and you know your right. frequency. Say right. it's you know. 337 hertz, mm -hmm. um, you're going to lay in a tank and you're going to be so zen yep. just floating in that tank with a little yep. 
that's just mm -hmm. there around you. Um, so I didn't. I opted just for some sort of like relaxing music. Right. Um, which, if you've never done it, mm -hmm. I always wanted to do it. Oh, oh do man, it! You'll love it. Do, do it. it. Oh, do it! It was mm -hmm. so cool. I, I want to do it again. I haven't done it in a while just because mm -hmm. I haven't scheduled the time to right. do it. Right. Oh, back to um, time. See the, see the yeah. callback. Um, yep. But that idea, I think there is something so true to that mm -hmm. that there is a frequency and there's certain music that you'll listen to, even mm -hmm. if it's not in your sort of sort of genre. Right. If it has those tones, you're going to be attracted to it. Right. Or as you said, turned on right. by it. And I hate mm -hmm. how people are like, "Oh, turned on." It's like, no. Not that kind of turned yeah, on. Yeah, you can I literally could be. be but you could literally <laughs> be like turned on and turned off. Right. Literally like a switch. Like I'm into this. I'm not into this. Right. Because um, I say that too, and people are like, "Oh, you're turned on." I'm right. like, "No, I'm not turned on." Oh, but that that. So I get what you're saying. Right. right. Um, oh, but basically, that that's mm -hmm. that psychology behind that stuff, right. I think, is so cool. Right. And um, oh, t to answer your question before too, the other thing that I'm also passionate about oh, is yes. sharing this with other people. Yes. I want to. And everything that I do, um, I want to help other people see what I see. I want them to recognize the importance of essence. Like there's a certain, you, have, you need to have a certain sensitivity to the world to understand this and to pick yeah. up on it. I think everybody can get to that place yep. through, you know, multiple changes in their life and things like that. Um, and in, in fact, in the future, if you'd like to collaborate on this, I wanted to create an event. That's what this event was supposed to be, yes. but it was, it was a little too complicated for me. So I sure. said, let me do this first, but that's what I want to do. I want to create another artist's table, but I want it to be almost kind of like a symposium as well. Something where oh. I can gather a bunch of people, different artists, different people and, and say, listen, this is what it means to be be a creator and basically I want people to walk away saying or feeling empowered like wow I can create anything I am yeah. a creator and it so that's that's what I want to do I don't, I don't know 100% sure how I'm going to do it yet but okay. I'm following the voice in me by writing the book by making these events happen by taking this opportunity coming out on the yes. podcast yes I think you just listen to that calling put out put out there what you want what you want to convey it comes back and it, exactly and something I learned today is um, especially when you're giving back to the world. If you're doing something with that, uh, I, I don't know if altruistic is the right word, like that altruistic selfless intent, yeah. you tend to, it, it tends to happen a lot easier for you, I think, or yeah. maybe not easier, but, um, it's almost like the universe is a little bit more in favor of it. Yeah. So it's really cool. When the motivation is a little more pure. Yes. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. So on that note, where where can people find you? Uh, yes. They can find me. Well, uh, I have a blog. It is um, – I forgot the name of my blog. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. We can always do like a little – like a lower third right over here. We yeah, can type it in. Yeah, there you go. Um, so we'll pop in a lower third. There's going to be links and, and all yes, of that stuff. It is, oh, she's a goddess.org. Um, that is the blog. Cool. Um, that's where I put my events and stuff like that. It, cool. It's pretty new and rough. Go to the desktop site, not the mobile. The mobile no. layout sucks. Okay, working on that. It's yeah, all good. It's working all good. on that. Yeah. Um, but I hope to put all of my content all on that one site. So, cool. She is a yeah. goddess.org. Yep. Awesome. Yep. Sarika, thank you so much for doing this. Of course. Um, and now we're going to go take some pictures. Oh, yeah. I'm going to take some pictures of you. Sure. And for those that are interested, mm -hmm. you can go to the Patreon page, Steve Walter. Nope. Hold on. Patreon.com slash Steve Walter photo. <laughs> yes. See, I'm still working on those websites too. Mm -hmm. If you guys are interested in seeing some of those behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. so, awesome. Bye. See you. <laughs>